In today's video tutorial, we'll be checking out Magento 2 Flutter point of sale application backend configuration settings. Hi, and welcome back to this new video tutorial of Magento 2. In today's video tutorial, we'll be checking out Magento 2 Flutter point of sale application backend configuration settings. Now in the previous video, we saw how the POS terminal agents or the cashiers would be able to make use of the single application for the Android and the iOS devices or the tablets to access the physical stores that to only go there and the rest of the configuration settings there on the mobile end itself. So in today's particular video, what we'll be doing is we'll be seeing the admin backend panel configuration settings for the same, wherein we'll be seeing how the admin in the first place would be able to create the outlets, how he'll be able to add and manage the caches, how he'll be able to basically set up the or with the particular POS orders and the initial configuration settings for the same. But before I proceed further with this particular video tutorial today, please do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive the latest updates from our end. And if you find this particular video helpful, then do kindly give it a thumbs up. So let's hop on to the admin backend panel of the Magento 2 and let's see how this particular mobile application can be configured in the first place. For the same, let's hop on to the admin backend panel now. So right now you can see that I'm at the Magento 2 backend panel right now. So what I'll be doing is I'll be first logging into the admin backend panel by entering the username, password and tapping on the login button thereafter. So let's tap here on the sign in button and will be signed into the admin backend panel of the Magento 2 web store there. And let's tap here on the close button. Now here you will find one option with the name POS and here you can see that we have the option to add and manage the outlets, add and manage the caches, check the POS orders and check the POS configuration. So let's go with the POS configuration. First of all, let's tap here on the POS configuration and this would redirect us to the POS configuration section in the admin backend panel automatically. So here you can see that we are under the configuration section under web cool block we have the POS and here we are having the POS configuration section. You can also navigate to this particular section by going through stores and then configuration and under configuration you have the web cool block under the web cool block you'll find the POS option and here you can configure the POS uh, as per your own requirement. Now here we have different options let's go through these options one by one and let's see what different options do we get in the configuration section that for the uh, Magento 2 Flutter point of sale application that in the admin backend panel itself. So here we have the very first option as the enable offline mode. So if you want to enable the offline mode uh, for your POS terminal there, uh, then you can choose this as a yes. Otherwise you can choose it as a no. If you choose it as a yes, then the uh, POS terminal agents would be able to place the orders in the offline mode as well as per the requirement there. Then we have the product page load size. Now here you can enter the integer value as per your own requirement and the entered value will be the count of the products load at the time of POS initialization. So whenever the POS is initialized there and the home screen of the POS is displayed there uh, that lists the products. So here you can set the product page list size there uh, at the very first time how many products should be loaded there. Then we have the enable cashier single login. So you can choose this option as a yes or a no as well. If you choose it as a yes, uh, then only a single uh, cashier would be able to log into a particular POS terminal. Otherwise, if you have assigned multiple POS agents to a particular POS terminal and you've chosen this option as a no, then in that case, uh, the multiple POS terminal agents would be able to log into that particular uh, terminal as per the requirement there. Then we have choose attribute for barcode. Here you can choose the attribute for the barcode uh, there as the SKU. And then we have the divide catalog inventory for the web and POS separately. So you can choose this option as a yes. And if this setting is set to no, then what will happen is that uh, the there will be a sync issue in the POS. In that case, if all of the inventory is purchased from the website front end, then will, there will be none left for the POS terminal there. If you choose this as a no. So what you need to do is you need to set it as yes and that, that way you'll be able to set the inventory for the online web store as well for the product as well as for the POS uh, uh, terminal as well. 
then what you need to do is you need to set up the invoice slip logo so whatever logo that you upload here would be used for the invoice there and then you need to tap here on the save configuration settings now after you're done here what you need to do is you need to go to ps terminal once again and let's see how we can add and manage the outlets there so under the add manage outlet okay uh let the page come up so we are under the outlet manager section here you'll find the complete list of outlets that you've already created and from here you can select any particular outlet you can delete the outlet disable or enable the outlet as per the requirement there or you can edit the outlet by tapping on the edit option under the actions column here on the right hand side apart from that you can see the outlet name its status the product assignment basis whether the products have been assigned on the product basis or the category basis or all products have been assigned and whether the particular peers terminal is having the default customer or not to add a new uh, outlet uh, that what he need to do is you just need to tap here on the add new outlet button on the top right hand corner here and that would bring up the particular section to set up the outlet there so the very first information that you need to set up is the outlet information here you have to give the outlet name for example let's set it as test outlet the product assignment basis whether it would be product based uh, assignment so you have to assign each individual product manually to the ps terminal otherwise it can be of the category basis in the case of category basis you can select the categories uh, whose products would then be assigned to this uh, ps uh, terminal that you are going to create or whether you want to assign all of the products uh, to the ps terminal there so for example let's choose it as uh, product based then you want to set the default customer as yes and then you have to set the outlet outlet address let's say it as 32 street lane california and then we'll set it as enabled thereafter if you have selected the product assignment basis as product based then you have to go to associate product individually otherwise if under outlet information here you have set it as category based then you need to go to the associate category products and uh, you can see that applicable this particular section is only applicable when the product assignment basis is set as category based also uh, the product inventory is same for the pos and the website in the case of associate category product now in the case of associate products individually we have the uh, quantity for the pos uh, terminal is different and for the web store it's different so uh, right now we have set the outlet uh, product assignment basis at, as for example product basis so we'll go to the associate product individually and the just shuffle bag is having a quantity of uh, 55,052 I'll enable it out for the POS terminal and for the POS terminal we'll set another uh, quantity as per the requirement there so the web and the POS are having different quantities there so similarly we can add multiple products as well then we'll come down to the default customer address so here we'll choose the default customer that should be assigned so for example i'll select it as john doe and i'll select the name and the address there for this uh, would be the default uh, customer uh, for the ps terminal there for example if a customer comes in and doesn't want to add his address or name then this default customer can be used to make a checkout on the ps terminal itself on the mobile application there and we also have the option to uh, mass product assignment but uh, it can only be done after the outlet creation so after filling out the basic details there i'll tap here on the save outlet button and this would save the particular outlet so you can see that the outlet has been saved so the test outlet has been created it's product based and uh, i can edit it out and after editing it out if i want i can go to the mass product assignment and if i have a csv file with the product data there then i can basically uh, make use of the same and i can upload it up to mass assign the products to this uh, pos outlet there for the sample you can download the sample csv file from this particular link that we have provided that's the download sample file so this was the uh, add manage outlet section now let's see how we can add and manage the cashiers in the uh, second place so let's go to the add manage cashier section and here you'll find the complete list of cashiers that you have created and uh, uh, their name their email address their status uh, whether they are logged in or not and uh, uh, the edit option to uh, edit the particular cashiers there to add a particular cashier you need to tap here on the add new cashier button 
and this would bring up the particular section wherein you will be able to add the new cacher. To add the new cacher, you need to uh, set up the cacher information that includes the image. So I'll include the image of the cacher there. I'll upload it up and I'll set the name, for example, Smith Doe. I'll set the email address smith at the rate of webcool.com for the time being. I'll set up the contact number. I'll set the password. I'll confirm the password. I'll set the sort order of this particular one. And from the outlet, I can assign uh, this particular cacher to a particular outlet. Then now multiple caches can be assigned to a single outlet as well as with the configuration set in the uh, POS configuration settings there. And then lastly, we need to enable it out and then we need to tap here on the save cacher button. After tapping on the save cacher button, the cacher would be saved and would be listed under the particular cache. Uh, cache manager section as you can see so if I scroll down here the smith do has been saved it's his email is this uh, is login right now he's not logged in and under the actions column you can see the, that we have the edit option for the same now after that on the third point we have the PS orders now all of the orders that have been processed through the PS terminals all of those orders would be listed under this particular section and the admin can check the PS orders and the details for each of the orders within this particular section there so here you can see that we have the order number 114, 115, 117 uh, and here you can see the outlet names, Caspian outlet, we have the Crocs outlet, we have the Numa outlet and here we can see the cashier names as well. You can see that for Caspian outlet we have uh, Jenny Doe, Jenny Doe, for Crocs we have Jen Doe and here you can see that we can view a particular order by tapping on the view order let's open it up in another window and this would bring up the uh, particular details of the particular order that has been placed to the pos terminal there by the agent himself so this was the particular section here for the uh, pos orders and lastly we have the pos configuration and we've already gone through the pos configuration there itself so yes that was much about the uh, magento 2 flutter point of sale application backend configuration settings there and i hope that this particular video helped you out in understanding the workflow of the same if you still have any questions your sessions or requirements regarding the same then you can anytime get back to us at support at the rate of webcool.com or you can raise a ticket at webcool.uvdesk.com as well. Apart from that, if you find this particular video helpful, then do kindly give it a thumbs up. And lastly, thanks for watching this particular video and have a great day ahead.